open the tecla structure uh, icon it will give you this um, um, welcome uh, window and then you will find here that there's some environments okay at the moment we install only Southeast Asia environment so what is this uh, environment this environment is is uh, usually uh, the standards that you are going to use so if you're going to use a uh, British standard and then use the uh, UK environment European standard and the default because since this one comes from Europe and then if you have a US or Japanese or Korea so you can uh, you can just change the environment here so that one you can download that one from the from the website but at the moment we're going to use the Southeast Asia environment Southeast Asia it means this one is a combination of a uh, different environment or different standards so US Europe and UK is the most likely is uh, combined in Southeast Asia. As you know, our standard comes from them, right? And then you have the role. So this role, I mean, if you are a uh, precast concrete detailer, but this one, I mean, the reason why there is a role here is uh, um, uh, there, there are some uh, attributes that for precast and some attributes for still detailer, okay? So you can just simply click all. Because if you want to use the uh, uh, different role, okay, and then the configuration. If you have a full license, you can see this everything. But of course, this one is also uh, there are some uh, configuration for project viewer only. It means you only view the project. Let's say you could, I create the model. If you want only to view, you can view, you can create report, and then you can uh, print the drawing as well. So that one is the project. It's project viewer is more than as a viewer because you can create a report and you can uh, print a drawing in the project viewer. And then you have also this uh, drop term. Uh, drop term is only uh, for those who are going to to do the two D drawing. So let's say I uh, one group is finishing the uh, the three D drawing. So there's a group of people who only focus on the two D drawing. So they can create the two D drawing from there and then other dimensions. And uh, engineering, rebar detailing, primary, steel, and uh, of course, we're going to use the precast concrete. Full is everything, okay? Then primary, actually, primary is both precast and steel. It's, it's like a full version, but uh, limited. Uh, sorry, I cannot say that. Uh, full, it's like full meaning that uh, you can create steel and then you can create a, uh, a concrete. The only thing, the reason why we call it primary is uh, it's limited in the number of uh, object. So there's a limitation on the number of object. So 2,000 parts only you can model. So most likely it's only one, one story of a uh, HDB. Okay? But of course, the pricing of that one is, is totally it much cheaper. Okay, so at the moment we're going to use the Southeast Asia all precast concrete and so on. Okay, and then click. So once you click OK, all right. So uh, it will uh, open our uh, Tecla structure, and then there will be a welcome window again here. So in a welcome window, you can see here that there is a recent. Uh, uh, recent model that you have created. Recent it means uh, that's the job or that's the project that you're working on. Okay, and then if you click all models, it means you can you can browse on a different project, whether it is in your computer or on the other uh, computer or on the network. And uh, of course, we're going to start with this new. So can you go to the new? Okay. Okay, for the new, of course, name, you can uh, simply uh, type uh, the name here. Let's say uh, Excel Training. Excel Training. And then we have we do have a template 
here, but uh, we're not going to use this one at the moment. We use the, the blank. So in case that uh, uh, this, in case that you have a something like a, a project, so you can put that one as a template, and then every time that you create a new one, all the standards that you put on that project will be copied on the next project. So that's a template. Okay, but at the moment we're not going to use it. But Again, another thing is uh, there's a type here, whether you want to use a single user or a multi-user. In Tecla structure, single user and multi-user can, can, can change, can, you can change or you can use any time. Okay? You can start with single user and then you can end up with the multi-user. That's, that's easy. And vice versa, you can start with multi-user and then end up with a single user. Okay, so now what, what is this single user? Single user, it means I have a, uh, we have a project that each one of us is handling a, a block. Okay, one, one block each. Okay, multi-user is something like, let's say one block and then all of us will, will be working together. So, uh, you, it depends on how you, how you uh, segregate the work. It's either you segregate by floor, which is, I don't think it's not very uh, uh, efficient if we, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, segregate by floor because it's more, mostly it's typical, okay? So the, I think the best is it's either you select by area, okay, or select uh, segregate by elements. So one would do the facade, city shelter, parapet, plants, and so on, okay? At the end of the day, you have the full model. Okay, so that's a multi-user. So the model could be in one of the computer or could be in the uh, uh, data server. Okay, so that's a single user and multi-user. So at the moment, we, we work as we work alone, or we uh, we work as a single user mode, and then just simply click here, create. Okay, click create. Okay, so from here, you can uh, you can go to this window and then tile vertically or tile horizontally, so it will it will fit into our uh, it will fit into our window. Okay, so window tile vertically or tile horizontally. So you will notice that uh, okay, you can do them if you notice here that uh, the view name here is. 3D, right? 3D. I just click skip. Okay, so this view 3D. Now, uh, basically, there is a uh, option here to click the maximize, right? Maximize. So once I click the maximize here, what happened? It will still it will maximize the view, but the thing is the 3D will merge will merge here check we need to the lower and the monitor to be lying in some view um two monitors um uh, no, you can only just uh, yeah, change it. But uh, this one, the uh, this 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 one can be this one can be in the other monitor. Mm -hmm. This one, the the commands. Okay. So now, uh, if you notice here, this one merged on this one. I I really don't like this uh, way, but 
it, it depends on you. But uh, usually I go to the style vertically so that it will fit in here. Okay? Or you can create your shortcut. Because uh, for me, I just created the uh, shortcut, let's say Q. One, one click of a button, then it will fit into my, uh, my window. Now, okay, uh, this is not the normal one that I do, but uh, uh, if you want to change your shortcut, you can go to this uh, settings, and then here, keyboard shortcut. Settings, and then keyboard shortcut. Okay, so if you click keyboard shortcut, so all the commands will be here. There's a lot of commands there. Okay, so let's say for example my uh, my tile. I just type here tile. Okay, so look, let's say the tile horizontally. I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, shortcut yet. Okay, so here enter shortcut. All you have to do is to key in the the text that you want to to use. Okay, yes, let's say this one, the shortcut is, uh, let's say, uh, N. Okay, N is okay. But if the shortcut is something like, uh, uh, let's say, Control C, so it shows that there's a, already a Control C there, conflicts. So you have to change. Okay, the shortcut can be a letter, only a letter, or can be a Alt and letter, Control letter, or Shift letter. Okay, so that that's the shortcut. So, so you can uh, do that one later. Okay, now uh, in our view, of course, I think uh, most of the software, if you want to zoom, it's uh, this uh, scroll, scroll in, scroll out. Okay, so that's the zoom, and then for panning, pan. So just simply click the middle button of your mouse, click the middle button of your mouse, and then move or pan. Okay, and then to rotate, to rotate, this one is quite different because you have to press control key, press the control key on your keyboard. While, while pressing the control key on your keyboard, click the middle button of your mouse and then you move. So it will, it will rotate. Okay, so that's how you rotate. Control key and then middle button of your mouse. Now, I uh, just want you to know that in tecla structure, there are always many ways to do a certain, uh, I mean, but many ways to do, or many, many different command, but one output, same, same output, okay? So, later on, we will, uh, we will notice that, uh, okay, let's say creating of this item could be in a different way. But it depends on you how you want to to create it. Okay, so I will uh, give you the uh, the choice how to create, but the same out the output is there. Okay, so that's the tecla structure. Okay, um, look if you notice here, this is the the uh, the pivot point or where the the view rotates. Okay, on this magenta color. If I want to change that magenta color, okay. Um, I can simply press Control R, Control R. So by pressing Control R, it will tell us peak position, peak position. So let's say I want to change that one here. Okay, my rotation will be here. So I'll just click here, and then now to rotate this one, you don't need to press the Control key. If you if you use the control R command, you don't need to press the contr the control key when you rotate. All you have to do is to press the the left button of mouse, 
and then you can rotate but it will re rotate on this on this part okay again again so control r so i can pick position so here always look at the left bottom corner pick position and then click here i'll, I'll move the pivot there and then left bottom of mouse so i don't need to to press the control key but anytime you can always press the control key if you like to move immediately okay so anytime you can always press the control key right so there are two ways to rotate one is control r and then you left button of mouse or control key and then the middle button of mouse so it is but it's the same rotation okay so it's your choice whether you want to control and middle button of mouse or control r and then click and then left button of mouse okay okay so you will notice again that it's still 3d so if we want to change to the 2d plane okay all you have to do is to press control p control p so that's that's the shortcut of the uh, changing 3d to to plane okay and then if you press control p again control p again it will go to 3d p so just control p and control p is the interchange of 3d to control p only plan uh plan. both both so yeah okay control p it's not basically plan it's plain plain, plain. because plan is plan is this one right plan is uh, the top view right yeah, top view. because later on when we have a uh, elevation i can also use the control p which is the the elevation mm -hmm. so i can say control p is the plane plain. not the plan okay so because it it can be used on the plan and it could be used on the elevation view okay so control p basically that control p is the shortcut of this okay look if i double click on the view double click on the view ah. So it will show me the view properties. Okay, double click on the view, it will show you the view properties. Okay, so in here, you will see that, that the control P is this angle. So 3D, right? If I change this one to plane and then modify, so that's the control P. So it's just a shortcut to have a control P there. Okay, but that's the one. Angle, plane, or 3D, and then modify. So that's the control P. Okay. So uh, now, again, uh, you can see there that if I double-click the view, it will show me the, uh, the view properties. Or, just simply select the view. When I say select the view, okay, when I say select the view, you must see this yellow border. Okay, yellow border. So if the yellow border is shown in this window, so it means when you right-click, right-click, so this is the uh, the menu that you are going to see. You can see here properties, uh, redraw, and so on. Okay. So here properties. This is the same thing with the double click of the view. Same, huh? All right. So you can see the yellow. But look, if I select the if I select this. If I select the grid line, can you see the yellow color? No more, right? Disappear. But and then if you right click, if you right click, if the if the yellow color is not there, and then if you right click here, look, it's totally different menu. Okay? So it means if you select the view, there are uh, there are commands, there are particular commands for the view, but if you select the object or the element so there are also commands for that elements so totally two different 
uh, selection there. Huh? Okay. All right. So again, Control P, changing the view to plane and three D. Okay. Rotate, uh, rotate, zoom in, zoom out, and then pan. Okay. Now let's work on to the our grid line. Okay, grid line. Okay, grid line. So for the grid line, we have this X, Y, and Z. Remember, the tech structure X, Y, and Z is totally exactly to what AutoCAD X, Y, and Z is doing. Okay, so this one is the 0, 0, 0. So the AutoCAD also 0, 0, 0 on this point, right? So if you if you create a drawing in AutoCAD in 0, 0, 0, and then call inside the tech structure and then I'm rest assured that that one will be placed in this point. We have the same thing. In Rabbit, totally different. Rabbit has a different zero, zero, zero. It depends on their project point. Mm -hmm. But if they put the project point there, then it should be okay. But mm -hmm. as you know, Rabbit, there are two points. Survey point and project point. So by default, they use survey point. That's why if you call the Rabbit model inside mm -hmm. the Tecla structure, it will fly somewhere because they don't establish the project point so you must know that one if you are dealing with the rabbit model then you must know that uh, there is a project point and then there is a survey point even rabbit and autocad same company but they don't go to the exact position all right all right so now so this is the the x and then the y and then the z is of course this one okay um, okay, before I go to the uh, to this uh, what I call that uh, grid line, so you will notice that there is a this line. We call this boundary box. You can see the boundary box. Mm -hmm. So that that boundary box is the the area where you want to concentrate. Okay. So this is the visible area in your model. So everything inside this boundary box is visible. So the thing here is why why we have a boundary box because in in a project usually let's say a block is quite a huge area right but when you do the modeling when you do the detailing sometimes you you want to concentrate only on that particular area that you you don't want to see the other part so in that case we can just simply uh, go to this view okay go to this view and then here in the work area work area okay you can you can put that one on the plane first plane control p control control p first okay uh, if you want to to escape this you can escape and then or, or right click and then interrupt or escape to cancel the command uh, escape or right click and then interrupt okay now in this case if you go to the work area using two points Okay, using two points. Work area using two points. Under the view. Uh, because you turn off. Yeah. Work area. And then two using two points. Okay, look. If I click on these two points, so let's say here. So at my work area is only on this A B A B here. So even I even I zoom out, even I zoom out and then I press home key, home, this one will be my working area. Okay? So I mean don't worry about the, the other part. It's still there. The only thing is you concentrate on this area if you have a huge uh, working area. Okay, so now um, let's say you finish already the uh, the modeling, and then you want to see the whole the whole building again. So all you have to do is to select the view. Remember, select the view is with the yellow one, right? Select the view, or any here this one. Select the view. You can see the yellow. So once you see the yellow, right click, and then fit work area to entire model. Fit work area to entire model. Okay, so it will fit again to the whole area. And again, this 
this uh, boundary bus, it, there is a visibility or there is a, uh, what do you call that, a depth, depth. Okay, in visibility, there's a view depth. So you will notice here, from our coordinates, by default, by default, our coordinates is zero. It starts from zero, okay, by default. Then visibility, view depth up. So from zero, from here to here, it's 15 meters. From here to here is one meter. So whatever elements under 15 meters, you will able to see. But if your elements, or let's say your beam, rest on the 20 meter uh, height or level, you will not able to see it here. Unless you expand or you extend the view depth up. Okay? So that, that's the visibility. So you must, because uh, it happens that, uh, especially if you're a new user of Tecla, <coughs> Uh, it happens that hey, sir, this one is uh, I cannot I cannot find my beam. My beam is there, and then what or what he did is I click and click on that part. It doesn't show the beam. Then when I check, the visibility, the depth is is less than the the, the location of the beam or the column. Okay, so what happened? He click and he click, 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 and then when you when you expand the view, it shows that there's a lot of beam already created on that particular part. That happens. Okay, but in that case, you must check also the visibility or the view depth. Okay. All right. So now let's move on to the uh, to the grid line. By the way, do you have any question on that one? Not yet. Okay. All right. So for the grid line. I need to uh, Okay, for the grid line, we're going to uh, we're going to modify that grid line. Okay? So I'll just draw the grid line here and then I will show you how we're going to modify that new plan. Okay, first we have a plan. Okay, so this plan will have also one point. 
to uh, to modify our green light. We must know the value that we're going to key in the green light. Okay, so if you double click, okay, can you double click on the green line? Or right click properties, double click or right click properties, same thing. Double click, it will show you the grid coordinates. All right, so in here, X, this one is X, this one is X, this one is Y, this one is Z. Okay, um, X and Y coordinates. This one is something like a, uh, uh, what do you call that? It's the relative value. Relative value. You will notice in that x coordinate, it always starts from zero. So let's say this x, let's say the x, x, and then y. So it always starts from zero. So zero is where? This is your zero. Okay? From, let's say, from one to two, from one to two, what is the value? What is the distance? 5,000. So, you type here, zero, space, 5,000. Okay? From two to three, how much? 6,000. And then three to four is five thousand. So that's how you write the uh, the value. It's a relative value. It's like you're putting the dimensions, right? Now, y is the same thing. So for y, from zero, uh, from a to one, from a one to a two is zero is equal to four thousand, right? So space four thousand, space four thousand. This one is also equals to equals to zero space three times four thousand. It's the same. Okay? This one is the same. Because if constant value, then automatically the system will give you uh, the number and then the space. So three times four thousand. Okay, again, this one is a relative value. Relative value. Now, in the z direction, here, in the z direction. So again, zero, zero. Uh, z direction is an absolute value. Absolute value. You know, like uh, like when you when you're doing a uh, running dimension. Right? It always the, you have the baseline, it always starts from the baseline. So that's the value we put in the z direction. So it always starts from the zero. So it means in this case, from zero from zero, zero to the first floor is how much? Two eight five zero. Space zero to the second floor, how much? Two eight five zero times two. Yeah. Can you? Not can you? Five six five seven zero. Five seven zero or five six six. Five seven zero zero. Five seven zero zero. Okay. And then from here to this one is how much? You need to sum it up. Okay. So what is the value for that one? Five seven zero zero plus two eight fifty is what? Six. Uh, 8550. Huh? 8550. 8550. Ah? Yeah. 8550. Okay? So this is how we're going to uh, uh, to modify our grid line. Okay? Can you can you plug this one in your uh, in in the uh, in the grid properties?
Space Force. Space Force. Space Force. Space Force. absolute value. The uh, x and y is always relative value. Example, our pinch roll line starts in negative 500. Okay. So you put negative first. Then, so no, you put negative 5 because it's positive. No, negative positive. Yeah. So you need to put negative 500 space 0 space another. another, another uh, because uh, 0 Ah, uh, okay. If you don't want, if you if you want to skip the uh, if you want to skip the zero coordinates and then you put you don't put zero. Okay, I'll give you an example. Here. Let's say uh, this is your floor, right? This is your floor, and then you say this one is negative five hundred, and then this one is let's say one thousand. This one is from zero. Huh? Zero. And then you you want you don't want to, to create the grid line to zero. So from negative five hundred and then one thousand already. So what will be the uh, what will be the uh, the value here? So negative five hundred. Then immediately you go to one thousand. Ah, sorry, negative five hundred and then uh, because, because this one is this this one is the base, so it's still yeah. one thousand. Then if you have this one, then it will be what one thousand. Let's say this one is uh, four thousand. Uh, 4, so it will be five thousand. Okay. So you, if you want to skip the zero, so because we call this one as a global coordinates. Okay. Go to the uh, global to the zero zero zero. Okay. So once you have that one, okay. Let me just. Uh, Put that one here, okay? So x zero space how much? Five thousand space six thousand space five thousand, and then here I'll just type here three into four thousand, and then z is zero uh, two eight fifty five seven zero zero eight eight five five zero, okay? And then uh, the x will be 1.1 space 1.2 space 1.3 space 1.4 and then the y will be a a that sorry a point one and then a point two a point three a point four okay how about the z this one i can just simply type here f f l and then look at this uh, first floor. First floor is first space floor. If I type here first floor, what will happen? So my 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 uh, my label will be first, and then the floor will be at the top. So you must add the double quotation mark. So enable for you to uh, to to have a proper spacing here. You type here first. Floors. So double quotation mark and then space and then double quotation mark second floor. Okay? So it will consider the, the space. Not as your separating value. So first floor, you type here. So this one is second. Roof. Roof no need. Okay?
Okay, don't forget to save. Okay, don't forget to save. So you just type your name here. Save. Save so that you can al always uh, um, load it later if you want to use it. Because sometimes you accidentally delete that one, so you still have. Okay, um, okay, look, listen. This one, once you finish the, uh, the coordinates uh, uh, value here, so all you have to do, because you have the existing, right? You have the existing. All you have to do is to modify the existing. Modify. Don't create. If you click create, it will add additional grid. Okay, so all you have to do is select this one and then modify. Say yes. What now? Let's say you accidentally create. Don't worry. So you accidentally create. So what happened is select the old one and then delete. Select the old one and then delete. Yeah. So the reason why we modify because there's an existing already. The reason why we create, it means there's no existing grid line yet. Okay? So save. So now, once you have this uh, grid view, so all, so what will you do with the boundary area? So how? How how you're going to to change the work area? Go to view work area. two points. Okay. That one is okay. One way is using two points, but you need to you need to pick the two points from here to here, right? But but basically the simple one is right click and then fit work area. Select the view, select the view, and right click. Select the view, click the view, right, and fit work area. So, any question on this? No question? So, now, uh, if you don't have any question, we're going to move on to the uh, uh, creation of view. Okay? Because at the moment, at the moment, if you press Control i press Control i Control i So, what you will see there in Control i View. That is the name view. Okay, you press Control I, and then you will see that I have only the 3D. Okay, now let's say, for example, okay, uh, I want to change that name instead of 3D. I want to change that one to 3D View. Okay, can we change this name to 3D View or to according to your the name that you want to call it? Can we? Of course, the answer is yes. Look, if you double click, if you double click on the view. Okay, double click on the view. And then this name, change this one to 3D under, uh, 3D space view. Okay, 3D view. Alright? And then click modify. So look what will happen. So this one becomes 3D view and that one is 3D view. 
Okay? So you if you want to name your view, then you all you have to do is to go to the view properties and then change the name of the view. Right? All right. At the moment, I have only one view. So, of course, I need to create a different view. View from view from plan first floor, view from the elevation at second uh, plan at uh, level second floor or view at the roof level. Okay? Or I want to create the elevation at grid 1.1, elevation at grid 1.2, elevation at A1 A.2, elevation at A.3. So how we are going to create those those view. Okay? All right. So kindly close the the view again and then we're going to start to create our uh, views, okay? So at the moment I will teach you how to create that one manually. Okay, by the way, by the way, I forgot to tell you. If you notice here, there's uh, this one, this extension of the grid one, grid grid line. This is, uh, we can change this one. Okay, at the moment, by default, this is 1,000. So how do I know it, it's 1,000? Just double click. You can see here, these are all 1,000. Okay, so if you want to change the length of that one, then then add the value okay and then modify right all right so let's let's move on to the to the view let's you mean here yeah circle yeah. uh not on not not on the uh, model this one is just uh it's just okay. a model so if you're talking about in the 2d drawing for your representation, yes, you can have the circle. You can have the ob, ob, uh, oval or, <coughs> or rectangular. But at the moment here, I don't think it can be done. Yeah. Okay. So now let's um, let's create now the uh, the view. So let's go to the view properties, and then here you will notice that there's a uh, new view. Pull it down and then new view. So here uh, we're going to use at, at least these two first, okay? These two. And then here, basic grid view of a model. So in this case, we can create the basic view for the plan using this new view. Okay? So what you what we what we're going to do is just simply click on, but before we click on this. Make it sure that you press the shift key. Shift. Press the shift key and then click the basic view. Shift key and then click the basic view. So, okay. Shift key and basic view. The shift, it means it will show you the properties. Before you create the view, you can change the properties first. Okay? If you want to change the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, whatever you want to see in that view let's say for example if you want to angle that one and then you want to change the visibility and then you must show the properties first but if you're okay with this one you can just simply click basic view okay but since we need to change the name first we need to show the basic view properties okay so again click shift and then click the basic view it will show us the properties here. And then this is the create view. Okay. So for the properties, let's say the name, I want to create what? First floor? Okay. First floor plan. Plan at first floor. Okay. Let's say plan at first floor. So this one, this one is just a name. So no need for you to add this uh, quotation mark. It's just a name. So plan at first floor. And then... You want to create, when you create, is it in 3D or a plane? So I want to use a plane. Orthogonal, of course. And then visibility. So do you want to, if, you, if you're if you viewing the first floor, do you want to see only the first floor or do you want to see with other floor? Of course, you don't want to see the other floor. So you, want, you need to change the visibility. The... Uh, 
the the depth. Let's say one thousand, one thousand. So it means from this first floor, I can see only the elements below uh, one thousand below, and then one thousand above. So more than one thousand, I will not able to see. But of course, if that one is a wall which is three meters, so I can still see the whole floor. But let's say the the corbel at the top of the wall, I will not able to see because that one is over one thousand. Okay, so there you go. Apply. Okay, follow my lead. Apply. Don't close this view properties because we're going to use this one. So just put that one aside. Don't close it. All you have to do is to change the name, change the angle, and change the visibility 1000, 1000, and then apply. Okay, that's it. And then don't close it. So in the create basic view, go to the coordinates. So what is the coordinates of the first floor? How much is that? 2850, right? 2850. So we must type the 2850 so that it will create the plan at the coordinates 2850. Because if we don't change this one, it will still create the zero coordinates. The only thing is, it will, the name is first floor, but the coordinates is uh, zero. So you must remember that one. Whatever the name is, let's say if it is the first floor, that one should be match to the coordinates. Okay, so we type here 2850 and then just simply click create. Click create. Okay, there you go. So this one now is the first floor. Okay, let's try to see uh, approximately if this one is correct or not. Look, if I rotate this one, can you see the difference now? Okay, this one is something like the approximate one meter, one meter, but but basically this one is the from zero from zero that one is the two eight fifty. This is the two eight fifty. Okay, this one is just a approximate uh, view, but basically the viewing is something like up to here. Okay, but don't, don't mind this one. But basically this one, the level of this one is already two eight fifty. Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue. So let's say uh, I'm going to uh, create again. So second floor, plan at second floor. So all I have to do here is to change the, the name, apply. And then what will be the coordinates again for the second floor? 5-7. And then create. So this one now is 5-7. Look, it's more. The height is even more. Okay. And then continue. This one, plan a roof, apply, and then the coordinates at the roof is 8550, and then create. So now I have, if you now type, uh, press the control I, so you can see here I have the <coughs> three plans. Hmm? Pardon? <laughs> okay, look. You will notice that, that the view here is left and right. Right is the visible view. If I put this 3D view on the left, I don't have any view. But don't worry about it. The, the view is not deleted as long as you can see that one in the name views. So all you have to do is, okay, if I select all and then put that one on the right. So it will show you on the right. Okay, so you can you can do the uh, uh, tile vertically and so on. Okay, and then there you go. Okay, any question?
how to check if this second law is correct because I maybe I need to this one how to check if this the height is correct This one is a 3D view, okay? This one is the second floor. Second floor. Mm -hmm. This one is the roof. This one is first floor, okay? Mm -hmm. This one is the roof. So you can see the uh, you can see the different height. Mm -hmm. That's far. Should be dark. But of course there's some something that we can check later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I again I have four views here, right? I have four views. So let's let's move on to the elevation. This one is the plan view. Okay, now, uh, okay. May I ask, since we you know already how to create this one, what if what if I have the intermediate floor? There is no grid line, but I have the intermediate floor. <coughs> let's say I have the I have the intermediate floor between the first floor and second floor. Let's say from the first floor I have. 1.5 meter I want to create the floor plan 1.5 from the first floor so what 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 will you do let's say yeah it's an example let's say I have this I have this floor here this one this one is something like one one five from the first floor so how you are going to create the floor plan for this one Floor plan floor. There is no grid line, huh? but I have. I want to create the floor plan on this one so that when I do the modeling, it exactly falls on that uh, intermediate floor. So how you're going to create this one? Same thing, huh? You go to the new view, new view, and then even that one doesn't have the grid line there. So all you have to do is go to the new view and then shift. And then here, let's say uh, uh, plan at intermediate floor, okay? And then 1,000, 1,000, apply. So what will be the coordinates now? What will be the coordinates now? Must be 2,850 plus 1,5. Four three five zero. So you must type here four. Oh, sorry, four three five zero, and then create. So this one now is the intermediate intermediate floor. Even though there is no grid line, uh, the actual grid line here. <coughs> so, but the level of this plan will be exactly on that floor between the first floor and then the second floor. Apply first. Okay, look in tackle structure, you will you will notice that this one is totally different. Okay, apply, modify, get, and cancel. Okay, apply it means whatever you whatever you change in these properties, it you want to apply that one on the upon the creation. Apply. Okay, you want to use that. You want uh, uh, the application of what changes you have made in the properties. That's apply. So modify, it means there is an existing information in the element and then you want to change it by the, you want to change it for the new information that you added in the view properties or in the properties. So that's modify. Okay. So get, it means you're going to get the, val, uh, the information from the existing. You want to get it. No need for you to retype it, but you want to get the information. Okay. Uh, all right, and then of course, okay is as simple as apply and close. All right, so now I have now 
uh, four different views or five different views 3D, uh, intermediate, first floor, second floor, and then roof. Okay, now let's move on to the elevation. Elevation. Okay, make it as a plane elevation. Again, go to this uh, uh, new view, and then this time we're going to use two points. Using two points. Okay, using two points. So, again, kindly press shift and then click the using two points. Shift and using two points. Now, in, create, in creating the elevation, you will notice that there is no small box, small dialog box, right? Because uh, it will just show you the, uh, the view properties, okay? Let's say this elevation is, let's say, uh, elevation at say elevation at grid 1.2 or 1.1 or and so on or let's say yeah grid let's say grid 1.1 okay plane and then 1000 up so most probably you're going to if you start with the plan uh, with the plan most probably you you're going to change only the view name because the visibility is the same the orthogon uh, the uh, angle is the same okay all you have to do is to apply but when you create two points you will notice that here pick first position pick first position so what is first position remember we're creating the elevation of grid line so elevation of grid here grid 1.1 pick first position so on this line you can pick any any point so let's say here I'm going to click at the center okay click and then pick second position so what is the second position that one it depends on how you want to see the elevation do you want to look from the outside of the building or you want to look from the inside so that's the reason why it's better to use this one in the elevation because you can decide whether you want to you whether you want to look from the internal or external part of the building. Okay, so usually the the normal one is look here and then look here, right? So that's the normal one. So what I will do is I will click here. Okay, and then click. Make it sure that it's straight on the line, huh? If not, then you will have a, a problem here. So there you go. So from uh, from your uh, question earlier, elevation. So this is the elevation view. And then that's it. You just repeat the procedure until you create all the all the view. Okay? So again, let me just uh, continue. Let's say grid 1.3 apply. So here click 1 2 So let's say grid A A3 apply. A3, where's A3? This one, 1, 2, so I have A3, let's say grid A2, apply, so 1, 2, so now I have A2. So if I move on to my uh, grid, so you will notice here, I have a lot of grids, I, have, I, I created a lot of uh, views already. on creating of that one so because the same thing if I have a uh, if I have if I if I want to create a view between 1.2 and 1.3 so what you will do you just click from here to here okay so intermediate view Uh, 
Okay. Maximum 9 views can be open in a window. Okay? Maximum 9 views. Yeah, but that one is too much already. Usually if you if you really work on the 3D mode, one view is enough. Or maximum two views. Okay? If you're doing really on the 3D 3D modeling. So if you want to create another view, it will not you will not able to create again because nine views are open. So you you must close at least one so that you can create another view. I. Okay, and then you you select you select all this, and then put on the right side. Click the right arrow, <coughs> but it will give you a warning. Only nine views, same time. Okay, are we clear on this? vertically go to the this one this window tile vertically or tile horizontally this is the one that I showed you earlier in the shortcut I in my case I just put Q and then it will it will give me a tile vertically <coughs> Okay, so <coughs> once, okay, once you're okay with this one, uh, and then you don't have any question, okay. So, I want you to, from the view that you have created, okay, this view serves already its purpose that we learn how to create our view, okay. So, this time, since we learn how to create our view, kindly delete all the views that you have created, and then let, uh, leave leave 3d view only okay delete all the views delete all the views except the 3d view <coughs> except the 3d viewer ah here just click delete here oh. except the 3d view don't delete the 3d view Okay, now, so we still have the 3D view, right? We still have the 3D view. Okay, now, in Tecla Structure, there is an uh, automatic way to create all those views that we have created. So earlier, you create one by one, right? But in here, if you select the, the, the grid line, and then right-click on that one, and then create view along grid lines. Okay, select the grid lines. Create view along grid lines. Okay, click. So in this case, here it will create all the view according to the grid. Okay, all you have to do is just simply click on the create, and that's it. You have already the created views. So quickly, you can create the view. But again, what we have learned earlier is very important. Why? Because this one, it will only create 
along the grid line. Yes. If, let's say for example, that 1,500, that one is not part of this. You have to create that one manually. But if you want to include that one in automatic way, you must add a grid, grid line there. But sometimes you don't need a grid line. You need only to have a, a view, right? Intermediate view on the elevation and intermediate view on the, uh, on the plan. So this is, that, that is the way to do it. Okay? So in case that, okay, in case that you have create twice, Okay, you create twice. So look, there will be a 1-1, one 1-2. Dash one, one dash so it means a duplication of view. So what I would suggest is, instead of selecting one by one, and then delete the uh, unnecessary uh, view, you can just simply delete all, and then simply create again a new one. It's much simpler. Anyway, it will create according to the to the grid line. Okay, but again, if you want to create your own view, you know how to do that one. Okay, it's either create two points or create by a basic view. Okay, any any question on this one? This one is just a this one. Uh, this is the grid line. Okay, because since th this is the start, so we must uh, uh, know how to deal with this uh, grid line. Okay, now, no question? Okay, now I have a question. What if, what if the grid line is not on the zero, ma, this A1 and A.1 and 1.1 is not on the zero, 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 zero point? How do I move that one? Let's say, for example, the whole grid line is somewhere here. Somewhere here. Let's say, uh, 5 meters here and then 5 meters here. So the start of the grid line is here. Okay, so how we're going to change it? Okay, I don't know if you notice. If you double click on the grid line, there is the origin. <coughs> if you double click the grid line, you can see the origin. Okay, so all you have to do is to change the value. Even, even, let's say, for example, the, uh, the Revit uh, survey point, they have this X, Y, Z there. So you can also key in that one if you want to follow that one. But uh, we always recommend that you follow here instead of going there because you don't have reference on that. So in this case, let's say I have 5,000 uh, on X and then, ah, sorry, 5,000 on the X direction and then 5,000 on the Y direction and then modify say yes so now that is the movement of my grid line okay uh, control Z and do all right control C because once you move that one you must recreate your your grid line view because it will it will uh, it will be displaced okay all right now, what if, what if I want to have a uh, angled grid line? Let's say, okay, uh, one question. Can we copy the grid line? Yes, we can copy. Let's say here, select this grid line, right click and then copy. Okay, copy. So let's say I copied from this point to this point. So expand. Expand, it means it will expand the, the uh, boundary. Okay, now. What if this one, this grid line, is rotated? <coughs> it's uh, inclined. So what's, what will we do? So here, select, right click, and then cap, uh, ro move special and then rotate. Move special and then rotate. So click on that one. Now, it will, it will ask us, Pick the origin point of rotation. So let's say the origin point is this one. So it will rotate from here. Click on this one. It will give you this value. Okay. And then what will be the rotation angle? 45 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Okay. So you type in. Let's say, let's say 45 degrees. And then mod move. So now <coughs> you have a inclined grid line.
Now, <clears throat> another question is, hey, I want to add, let's say, only one grid line. Uh, let's say additional grid line. Uh, let's say here, I want to have a grid line. You know, sometimes the structure, there's some uh, uh, irregular grid line. That, let's say I want to have a grid line here. Yes. Right? So how I'm going to add that, that grid line? Okay, in, in Tecla structure, we do have this, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, in, is it in edit? Yeah, in edit, okay, if you go to edit, then here, grid line. <coughs> Create grid and then this one, add grid line. Add grid line. So it means if I click this add grid line, and then <coughs> pick the object. What is that object? The grid line. Pick the first position. So let's say from here. Okay, change the uh, this one. Let's say this one one, and then two. So that is my grid line. If I click this one, expand. There you go. So this one now is my. It's part of the grid line. But of course, if I want to add a label there, I just simply select select grid line here. And then here, double click on the grid line. Okay. Select this grid line by click properties. And then here, let's say <coughs> D4. Okay. Modify. So I have now this D4 grid line. Okay, that's in case that you want to have to have an irregular grid line. So, Sorry to ask yeah, you. it's okay. Uh, regarding what the view testing, mm -hmm. uh, manually view the for example the grid line A point uh, one. I saw there's an arrow. Is it cover cover the coverage only on that arrow, based on the arrow, or the entire grid line one? No, that one it depends on your visibility depth. Arrow is just a direction. Direction. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to know the coverage, it depends on your visibility okay. depth. Mm. So if the depth is 500, 500, only 500, 500 millimeter, you can see. But if the depth is, let's say, uh, uh, 15 meters, so you can see maybe the whole, the whole grid line from grid 1.1 to grid 1.4. Okay, so that one is, uh, again, depends on this. Okay, so arrow is just a direction, showing you the direction, not the depth. Okay, so let me just undo this one. You can delete the grid line in view. You can delete it, right? Ah, uh, yes. What's that, the one one point two? I can delete only one point two. Ah, uh, okay, I'll, I'll show you. Uh -huh. work area. Let's say 1.2, if I don't want the 1.2. So you will notice here, okay, I select grid line. There is a selection here, grid, select grid, means the whole grid, and then select grid line. Let's see, if I select grid line and then delete. But of course, uh, in that case, for, for me, what, I, I don't know if, what will be the implication of that one, huh? but let's see. Delete, and then select the grid line, and then double click on this one. What will be the implication? See, it's still it's still the same, still the same here. So, so it's much better you you change it here. Okay, but that one, of course, it, for the anyway, that one doesn't affect your uh, your drawing in that case because the drawing will 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 remove the one point two. But in these properties, that will be. I don't know how huh? if I modify this one. It it yeah it will come back when I modify it. Yeah. But I mean, for me, it doesn't matter because this grid line is just for you, for, for your reference in your modeling, mm -hmm. just for the build, for the structure. Okay, so uh, so we can, uh, we can continue. Um, so we finished the grid line and the view. So I think this time we can now start adding some elements. Okay, but before that one, maybe uh, just save your work. Here, first is, as, as I mentioned to you, we can directly create in 3D. But if you have a difficulty on modeling in 3D, you can always go to the 2D. 
there's no issue. 2D, 3D, it's okay. But uh, most of the Tecla user, they are used to the way of 3D. And it's very easy to add uh, a stru uh, element in 3D. Okay, here, these are, the, uh, these are the elements that we're going to use. We have the steel and then concrete. At the moment, we have precast detailing uh, configuration. So it means all precast and concrete rebar are here. But even if you have a precast detailing, if you have a precast detailing, it's not limited that you cannot create a steel. You can still model the steel, structural steel. It's there. No need for you to, to buy a module for steel to, buy, to, to create the embeds. It's already there. The only thing is uh, what Tecla removed in the precast configuration is to create the assembly drawing of the steel. Okay? But create the cast unit drawing, it's there. Okay? But modeling of the steel, it's also there. Okay? So, uh, in, in other words, any, any structure you can model, any structure you can model, or any element you can model, all right? Uh, first is, let's move on to this footing. So, in footing, I have two kinds of footing, the pad footing and then the strip footing. Pad footing, if I press shift and then click the pad footing, then you can see here, you have now this... Uh, this pad footing uh, uh, information okay so what is the uh, what is the characteristic of this pad footing so pad footing okay first of all the the properties you can put the name here you can you can type foundation you can type footing you can type pad footing okay let's say foundation and then the profile you can type the size of the profile that you want to use Let's say, for example, in that case, 1,500 by 1,500 by 800. So, I will just simply key in here 15 by 15, 15 by 15, so that will be the size of my pad footing. And then, uh, for, the, uh, for the height of the pad footing, that one is in this position. You can see this position, top and bottom. So, again, this pad footing, pad footing and column is almost the same uh, category. So, in this case, what happened is top and bottom. This one is according to the global coordinates. Okay? According to the zero, zero, zero. So, when you say zero, it means that one was, is, is on the zero coordinates. If I say negative, it will go down. If I put here um, bottom, bottom cannot be positive because the zero. So, it's always negative at the bottom. So it go down. Now, if if you want to make your uh, foundation of part footing up of the the coordinates, so you must change this one zero, and then this one seven fifty, so seven fifty. But in that case, let's say my part footing is eight hundred, so I'll just type here negative eight hundred, okay? And then here, cast unit. It's either you use the. Uh, Cast in place or precast. At the moment, we're going to use the precast. Of course, we're, we're talking about the precast here. And then, uh, material, C40, okay, can be C30, can, can be other material. And then, the class, this one is something like the color you want to, to, to use, let's say number one. And then, if you're okay with this one, if you're okay with this one, all you have to do is to pick the position. Pick position. So where is the position? The position is, I can click here. And then you have this one. Okay, why well, didn't change the... Uh, it's, it's, yeah. This one, the profile, we say 1,500 by 1,500 mm -hmm. means X, Y. X first, then Y. Yeah, this one, X and Y. Uh, okay. X and Y. Okay, in, in case that this one doesn't change, huh? You can you can change this one to one five by one five, and then this one to this one is negative eight eight hundred, and then modify. So you can uh, you can change that you can modify that one. Or what you can do is just simply add first and then modify. Yeah, oh, but this one after you modify, it will it will automatically change. Okay, just simply click. 
and then you can have this uh, uh okay look this one this one again our element here is parametric what is parametric parametric it means you can change the size let's say this one i want to change it to 1500 by 2000 and then enter so it will change to 2000 or maybe i'll change this one to 2500 to exaggerate it okay so i just change it but now if the if the changes it should it's on the other side all you have to do is to go to this rotation rotation select the top and then enter so it will rotate so here rotation front enter or top enter so it it will rotate okay now uh, position vertically okay look position vertically so here at the moment is it's at the middle correct it's at the middle if I change this vertical to uh, down and then enter it will go down if I change this vertical to up enter it will go up and then if I change this one to left modify or right modify so you can see you can change to middle middle again and then modify so that's that's the movement or that's the positioning of your element okay horizontal vertical and then the rotation now what if this one let's say top again top and front now what if this one is 45 degrees 45 degrees rotated so here in this case you can just simply type here 45 and then it will rotate as 45 degrees so very easy to to uh, manipulate the uh, the position of the part okay so just change this one to zero enter and then look vertical vertical if it is if you put down and then let's say from this handle we call this one handle huh? remember we, we will i will always maybe mention this handle handle is the node is the working point of the element so handle could be yellow and magenta okay remember this one huh? handle is always yellow and magenta yellow indicates that that is the start start point and then magenta indicates that that is the end point okay if the yellow is at the top of course the start is at the top and then you model it from the top to bottom but in this case this one is modeled from bottom to top because of the positioning on the coordinates okay so in that case even though that one the handle is uh, uh, here it's down so I can change the value here let's say 500 so it there will be a gap from the so again you can control the positioning of your handle but most of the time we always we always put the handle on the middle like this why because as you know tecla structure we can link to the design software so design software it means you, if you if you want to pass the analytical model of the design to the design software you must it must be on the center center of the element like this okay so uh, that's the normal uh, modeling of the structure uh, of the element it's most most of the time it's at the uh, especially if you're talking about the column it's at the center of the column right if the beam mostly it's at the the top of the beam okay but sometimes it's at the center of the beam as well okay so this one is the pad footing okay so what if I want to add the column so here I have this column again the column I have the uh, the name the profile the same thing position vertical rotation and uh, middle and then this time the top look at the top and bottom top is 4 5 or let's say 2 8 50 and then the bottom is is 0 so all I have to do is to click this one and the column is created there okay look at this one um, if I change if I change my bottom to 2850 
and then this stop is 57 okay look what will happen if i click if i click this this zero what will happen to my column the column will be placed where on the first floor ah sorry okay sorry 2850 2850 yeah see but here if i change this one to 2850 and then this one is zero okay so click on this one sorry 2850 2850 zero so if i click here okay. yeah so you will notice that depends on the positioning on the uh, of the column here okay again it it's uh, it's uh, according to the to the coordinates so the positioning of the column is according to the coordinates look let's say i have this one let's say i okay look this one if you notice is a two, 0 and 2850. If I copy this one, copy from this point to this point, look what will happen. I copy it, right? So here, if I click this one, what will be the height? What, what will be the coordinates? So automatically, it changed to, to this one. It will change the value once you copy. Okay? So that's the use of the column. Okay? So again, column can be uh, um, column can be changed again to let's say uh, 800 by 500 change. Or if you want a circular column, just simply type D 600. That's a circular column. Okay. So rectangular column, square column, D it means diameter. So the diameter is 600. So I can even add the reinforcement to the circular column if you like. Okay. So, but at the moment we'll use let's say 500 by 500. Enter, and then you have the column. Okay. Is it clear? So pad footing column they have the same uh, same category, huh? Okay, now for the uh, for the beam, okay, for the beam, beam is we have a three different types of beam here: the normal beam, the poly beam, and the spiral beam. So normal beam is just a pick two points, okay, pick two points one. And then two, so that's the normal beam. One, two. Again, if you notice here, normal beam, you have the yellow and then the the uh, uh, magenta. Okay, and then uh, uh, if it is a uh, poly beam, you have to click one, two, three, four, and then that is the poly beam. Okay. For poly beam, okay, poly beam, remember in poly beam, if, you, if I want to make this one as a curve, I can just simply select the handle. So here you can, you can see the handle, this one. Can you see this handle? If I double click on that handle, I can change the curvature of this. Let's say 1000. Modify. So I have this uh, 1000 modify. So that is the use of the poly beam. I can, I can create any shape. Quite easy, right? Just click the poly beam and then make a curve. Then you have a curve beam. Yeah. Yes. If I want to have, let's say, for example, a uh, a poly beam like this, one, one, two, up. So this one. 
I can still change this one to to curve. So let's say this one is 1000. I, by pressing Alt key, I can select all the handle on the corner and then modify. So quite handy to create a, a simple curve beam. Okay, so that's the that's the two types of beam: the beam, normal beam, and then the poly beam. The spiral beam usually this one is used for the ramp. Okay, but uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll discuss this one later. Okay, we'll go to the simple one first. Okay, now so I have the color. We have the footing, column, beam, and poly beam. Now. Next one is the panel. So the panel, if I click the panel, I can type the height, let's say 2850 by 150. Okay, 2850 by 150. So just simply click 1, 2. Okay, look. Look at the characteristic of the panel. If I click 1 and then 2 and then middle button of my mouse, so that's a normal panel. Okay, that's a normal panel. But if I click, let's say, 1, 2, Two, three, and then middle button of my mouse. I, I can I can use the panel as a polygon panel as well, and then I created the L shaped panel. Okay, I can also create this one like like what I have did, like what I did in uh, in the beam. So one, two, but of course this one could be on the plane part only. Okay, so there you go. So I have now this uh, panel. Now, the question is, hey, I created this panel. Can I split this polygon panel? Let's say, for example, I need to cut this one into four pieces. So, all you have to do is to go to the edit and then split. Select this one and then click click on the point and then it will split. Click on the point. So, this one, split, click and then click on the point. Then it will split the panel. I can split also any in this part and then split on this part. But unfortunately, the polygon, the polygon uh, panel cannot be combined. Okay, you cannot you cannot combine. But you can combine that one by adding to the cast unit. But you cannot combine that one physically. Okay, so let's say for example here, if I split this one, okay, if I move, look, I can also. I stretch that one by moving the handle. Huh? I can stretch the panel by moving the handle. Yeah. So if I split this panel, okay, three. I can combine this one. Combine one, two. Oh, sorry. Combine one, two, one, two. If you want to split the angle forty-five degree. If you want to split this 45 degrees, okay, this one. Yes. So I already split, right? Yeah. I need a 45 degrees, right? Yeah. But this one is later part. But anyway, let me just show it to you. Oh. Easy? Yeah, quite easy. That That is here. If I hide this one, that's 45 degrees. Even if uh, we have a 15mm gap. If you have a 15mm gap here. So, if, if you notice here, I, I don't know where, where, where is my split here. Okay, this one. Because this one, there is, a, uh, there, there is a splitting part here. So, if I move this one, move from here to here, let's say a, a 7.5. And then... This one, 7.5. So I have a 15 millimeter gap. Okay. So that's that's the characteristic of the wall. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. By the way, that one, the one that I cre you, you see the transparent, right? That one is by simply pressing Control One, Two, Three, Four, Five. Check Control One. What will happen? Control 1, it's the uh, wireframe. Control 2, it's uh, 
transparent. Control 3, it's a white color. Control 4, it's a solid. And then Control 5, it's a ghost image. Ghost image, it means if you put your cursor, it will highlight. Control 5, yeah. If you put your cursor, it will highlight the selected. So usually we use control 4 and then control 2. In any in any command, in any command, you can always interchange the 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 control 4 and then control 2. Huh? So even in the middle of the command, you want to move or you want to cut, you can always in change the 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 color. Huh? Because it's not something like I can only change the color if there's no command. No, no. Even in the middle of the command, Okay, you can change that one to transparent or solid color. Okay, and then lastly, lastly on this part is the slab. Slab is a slab is something like a can you can just simply click a, where, here one two three or and then middle button of your mouse. <coughs> so this this one is a slab. Or or you can uh, you can you can simply click a polygon one one two three four five six and then middle button of your mouse and then you have now the the slab. Okay? Again for the slab Whenever you have a handle like this, this one, this handle, I can just simply change this one to modify. So I have now this. I can also make a curve on the slab. Alright? So that's the uh, uh, slab. And then if I want to have a... Uh, now... Um, Okay, let me just delete this one. I also want to show you, in the modeling, uh, later on you can use this one. Especially when you do have a... Uh, anyway, all structure have the revision. Revision on the thickness, revision on the height, mm -hmm. position. So, it will be good if your modeling software is, is something like a parametric you can easily change that one or you can easily manipulate okay do you know have, have you used uh, sketchup have you seen sketchup before sketchup so uh, something like when you want to change the thickness you just pull pull push pull right mm -hmm. we do have the same thing in tecla structure even though let's say for example here if i want to change this the thickness of the uh, the slab i can change this one to 500 and then modify and then i can change also this one to to front and then modify so I, I can change and then here I can simply uh, uh, select by selecting the uh, the handle I can just simply move from here to here okay so that's that's the uh, the the way that you can also do in uh, when you have the modification okay changing the height and changing the, the size correct but uh, in tecla structure uh, we do have this uh, direct modification. This one. Can you can you look onto this one? Direct modification. So this direct modification. Again, uh, I just I just want to take. Please take note of this one. That in the direct modification, kindly use this one when it's needed. If it is, if you don't need this one, then turn it off. Okay, because sometimes you you pull the uh, the position and then. Your, your element will be distorted okay but uh, this is very useful but if you don't know how to use it it could be harmful as well okay just to remind you okay look I select this direct modification how, how this one works okay look if if I click this uh, this slab there will be a different way of uh, showing the the node, right? Not like earlier, it's just a simple yellow and magenta color node. But now it's a, it's a, there's a blue, there's a blue line there, right? So that one is for you to modify it directly, to manipulate it directly. Look, first is the thickness. If I click on this surface, click this surface and then move up, 
2 meters. So that's the thickness. I, I can easily move 2 meters. And then here, if I change that one, let's say 3,500 cut. So I can easily cut that one. So that is the direct modification. Now look, here if I click on this point, okay, and then click on this arrow. I click that arrow going go, going towards us, okay? If I say uh, 500, I, I just type 500 directly, five, no commands, just simply select the arrow and then type 500 and then enter. It will add 500. If I select that arrow and then negative 1,000, enter. So from 7,000, again 500, it becomes 7,500. <laughs> If I put negative 600, it will become 69. Okay, so you can easily manipulate that one. And then the thickness. All right. Now, another good thing here for the direct modification is if I want to add another node. So let's say, for example, this one, I want to add another um, slab here. I want to extend the slab here. So all I have to do is to select this node, the middle node, and then put it here. Okay, and then select again this node and then put it here. And then this node and then put, move it here. So, additional node. Very easy. How about mirror? Hmm? Is there a function like mirror? You draw out of the uh, mirror. Ah, yeah. Okay. There, there is. But we, we'll discuss that one later once we have the... Uh, um, so, maybe later once we have the model. Okay. All right, so if you want to also to, to cut, let's say, for example, this one, I want to delete, so I can still delete. And then here, and you can, all, you can also change this one by, so something like this. Okay, so that's the, the the direct modification can be used also for the this one. So here I can change the uh, I can change the height, I can change the size, right? Even even in the column column I can change the height. Okay, and then the uh, the size, the beam also. So there's a lot of things you can also do in the direct modification. Later on, when we do the, the rebar, you can also manipulate the rebar. You know, sometimes that's the bottleneck. Eh? When, you, when you want to have a change on the rebar, you, have, you want to modify. No need for you to recreate again, but you can, you can modify the existing rebar that you have created. Okay? So that's the, uh, the direct uh, modification. Right? So now, we have discussed already all this uh, uh, from, from the footing, just simply click one. From the column, click also one. Uh, beam can be two points. Uh, beam should be two points, one and then two. And then uh, beam, uh, polybeam, it should be a polygon. One, two, three, four. So that's a beam polygon. And then the panel could be uh, one, two, middle button. And then one, two, three, and then middle button of your mouse. The slab could be a polygon also. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there you go. So this is the uh, basic elements of Tecla structure. With these elements, you can do a lot of things. Any question? <coughs> 